So you want to know how to make one of these meters? Well, I'll show you how I make them. Hey everyone, thanks for clicking on my video. First off, I want to put this right out right now. I am not making these commercially. I made a few as presents to YouTubers, to crypto YouTubers, and a select few friends. I am not selling these commercially. I will not be offering electrical advice. It is a liability thing. This entire video is for entertainment purposes only. If you care to repeat anything I do in here, you do so at your own risk. With that said, let's get into it. So before we actually get into the build process of this unit, which by the way is actually fairly easy, I'm gonna tell you why I designed this one. And actually, I didn't originally design this. This is an original Space Goats meter design, the box and the case, this meter, not this part. He originally had this made as a hardwire. You'd have a uh, cable gland coming out of the bottom and you would hardwire this and usually either have an L630R 240 volt round plug here or dual uh, 515 120 volt plugs on here. It's meant to be a permanent mount so this way you can keep it on your rigs. I was interested in a portable version so the only thing I had a friend change out was delete the hole on the bottom, make this fully solid, and we changed the hole out so I can put this C13, C14 plug, or C14, C13. I always get them mixed up. In the center here, for an input and output, basically just a pass-through design, just like a kilowatt meter. Now, the problem with these are, many YouTubers, if you've ran up to 15 amps through this for an extended period of time, actually, you can even see on this one, mine's starting to get bent and a little deformed right there on the corner. Because of current going through it, these are good for short-term use only and to get a meet, uh, reading real quick. I wouldn't use this long-term. They have a tendency of melting. The other problem with this, it only works on 120 volts. A lot of us like to run our rigs on 240. So I wanted something that would work on 120 or 240. Hence, that's why this was made. So this runs on 120 or 240 volts, takes the C13 or C14 input and you can get these cords that go for your regular computer with a 515 input from 120 volts. You can get it with a this type of socket that will go into a PDU first, come into here, and then pass back out to whatever appliance or rig you wanted to meter. You can even buy these with a direct L6R30 plug on them. So you go directly from an L6R30 into here and then back out. There's, depending upon which way you get these cords, and you can get a ton of them on Amazon. Maybe I'll link a few of them down in the video description just as an example. But you can use this not only for rigs, for basically anything else you really want to test, as long as you have the correct input and output wires that would work for you. So with that said, let's get on with the build. So for me to start building this meter for myself, I'm going to need wire strippers, wire cutters, the 3D prints, the box, and the lid itself. Previously, I was melting in these little brass knurled nuts into the holes to give you some brass threads to grab onto for the M3 screws. I'm actually going to try just screwing directly into the plastic because it feels like it'll actually grab today. So if that works, that's going to skip me a step, which is perfect. Uh, we're going to need the C13, C14 dual plug set up here. I only found these really on Amazon, or not Amazon, eBay. I couldn't find them on Amazon, at least not at a decent price. So I will leave a link for this in the video description, as well as this. This will probably be an Amazon affiliate link. This is the uh, Drock meter that we're going to use in this build. And I like recycling an old extension cord that has 14 gauge, one of those really heavy duty ones. Um, AC extension cord. See, there's the plug right there. But this has the installation rated for ac power so i like using this for the internal wiring uh, we don't need no stinking instructions bye and we have the meter itself and the uh pickup coil this is a hall effect induction coil itself so that's all it comes with we're going to need to do some modifications to this and this case because there's no cutouts 
in the faceplate for where these little notches normally go. And same deal with this. This has like some sort of peaks here we got to cut off and a pinch in that doesn't work with how thick this is. So I end up usually gluing these when I'm done. So we'll get to that. First off, we're going to take these. Just break them right off. Bye. Bye. And then this should fit right in here. Actually, I think it goes. This, yeah, it goes this way. The little reset button. Oh, come on! Wires are stuck here on the side here. Almost. There we go. Ta-da! Yeah, the little reset button goes on the right side of the cover. So, that works fine there. Now, this one, I like doing a little bit more. First off, you got these four little triangles here. Just flush cut and get rid of them. Bye. And it goes flying. Even this little, really thin one will jam it up in there. So, do it on both sides. There we go. Now, these little pinchins, I like to leave some of it on there because it actually does help grab while the glue's still drying when we get to that stage. So, I will leave a little bit less than that. Something about that, you can see there's still a little bit left on there. I'll show you why here in a second when we insert it. Okay, so you want the orientation this way because you want your input power, whether it be 120 or 240, coming in to this plug, and then this one will go output. So we should be able to just push this right on in there and see how it's loose, but it's holding because we kept those little peaks right there. That will at least keep it in there for the time being so we can do all the wiring before we finish up and do the gluing. So, we're going to flip it over. Give me a second. I'm going to get probably about a foot of this out of the uh, sheathing, and we'll get this cut down the size. Now, if you notice, on the back of the socket, it has an F and E. That's your ground, and they're actually already pre-tied together. Uh, over here, you have an N, and then conversely, on this side, you have an N. Those are your neutral lines. They cross over. On the other side, you have your live wire which this is for 120 volts, live and live over here. So we're going to be crisscrossing wires over here. So the first thing we're going to solder here is the neutral lines because we don't have to do anything special with that. So that's going to be this terminal over here and this one over here. This is just a flux pen. Helps the uh, solder stick a little bit better. So I am quite animate about liquid flux. We just want to tin them so this way the wire when we get to that point will stick quite nicely and you can see I'm using a pretty fat tip on here you want to get the heat on these terminals quick and then get it back off quick so you don't overheat the plastic that these terminals are into and make the plug actually loose so keep that in mind okay we're gonna grab our white wire we want to go from here to there, so we will cut right about here. Yeah, roughly. Okay, so let's tin the wires here. And the reason why you solder this instead of doing like a crimp style connection, because you can do a crimp connection on here, is this socket is rated for 10 amps max if you use a crimp connection, but it's rated for up to 15 amps if you do a solder connection. So that's why I choose the solder. Perfect. There we go. That's our neutral connection or one of our legs on 240. Neutral for 120, one of our legs for 240 works both ways now while we're also here we don't need to do anything with the ground because the ground's a straight pass through but 
I also like to solder the ground because this is literally just a press fit over top of that terminal. So just for safety's sake, I like to throw some extra solder on there and make sure it has a really good connection. Okay, now for the, the live side, we're going to be running from here to here, but we need some extra space so we can have this wire go through the pickup loop. So let's go with about here. Perfect. So now, it doesn't matter which way the loop goes in, just put it through. That's it. Bend that wire up a little bit. And then we're just going to attach over to the other live side. Perfect. Now, the only other thing we need to do is this is your AC power input for the meter. So we need to grab power for the meter from the plug itself. If we grab it from this side, the um, this side, the problem with that is it's going to be reading the current also that it's consuming. So this way we take the power and connect to this side, the input. It doesn't read its own current usage which is only a couple of watts, but you want it as accurate as possible. So let me make two K two wires that will come from over here and plug in or actually solder on right here. Okay, so before we solder this to the plug itself, let's go ahead and insert them into this terminal block. And honestly, positive and negative doesn't really apply here, so it doesn't really matter which side you're putting it in. Perfect. So that handles all the wiring. And we should be able to just pop this right in here. Have to get the wire spin out of the way. So you would glue underneath here a little bit on the other side just to keep everything nice and sturdy. We're going to skip that right now for the purposes of this uh, entertainment video here. And let's plug it in and let's give it a test. Okay, so unfortunately I don't really have anything to put a load on here because all my rigs are over at the uh, crypto closet. I've moved pretty much everything over there now. But we can at least test to make sure it powers up. Now this is coming from regular 120 volt AC. Plug this on in. Give it a second. And there we go. We can see 121.3 volts, 0 amps currently being pulled, 0 watts total. Uh, frequency of our power, which is 59.9 hertz, 60 hertz power, um, zero cumulative kilowatt hours, and your power factor. There's also a hidden little black reset button here that will reset your kilowatt hours for you as needed. So let's unplug this. I got to hold this down since it's not glued in yet, so it doesn't pop out. Now this is coming from my 240 volt PDU. So again. You still use the input. There you go. 244.9 volts. So this works as long as it's wired up in this direction. The way I showed you earlier in here, you could do 120 or 240 with this meter. And the meter can actually handle an input voltage up to 250. So we're within 5 volts of the max, but the meter handles it perfectly fine. So if you made it to the end of the video, thank you for watching. I am not making these commercially. I have one 3D printer. That's it. Not to mention, I don't want the liability, which is why this video is for entertainment purposes, not educational. If you try to reproduce what I put in here and you hurt, kill, maim, whatever, yourself, anything, I am not responsible. This is an entertainment video only. I'm going to state that again. I will put links down in the video description for the Thingiverse files, for the box and the cover here. Probably an affiliate link for the screen itself on Amazon, and most likely the plug will be a non-affiliate link on eBay, because I just don't care to do the affiliates on eBay. And it's probably a better place to find this. 
I will also put links to the screws and these neural nuts if you're interested in it down in the video description. So if you want to come say hi, come on down to the Mining Misfits Discord. The link for that will also be down in the video description. I will not answer electrical questions. You need to figure this out on your own. It's a liability thing. But if you just want to say, hey, thanks, or hi, or anything else, I'm your man. I will be there. No problems whatsoever. And I will catch you on the next video. Thank you.